Hello and welcome everybody. I'm Gustavo Tolosa, a webinar, uh, plant-based webinar host and producer and I'm also a professional pianist, as many of you know. And um, I have done many webinars with Dr. McDougall in the last six years. Uh, this year, Dr. McDougall had several uh, had changes in his life and so did I. So we stopped the webinars maybe for a while we don't know, but I wanted to end this year with something special for all of you and do my last webinar of the decade, not the last webinar forever, but this is the end of a decade and I don't know if you thought about that. So this is a special way for me that I, uh, I and I'm sure all of you admire and love Dr. McDougall so much to end this year and this decade with uh, someone of the stature of Dr. McDougall. Um, I want to, uh, for, do for those of you who may know, not know him or know him not so well, I just want to describe Dr. McDougall for a few seconds, a few minutes, and um, how do you describe someone like him? Well, he's a board certified physician, um, an internist physician. He is an expert in nutrition. He's the founder of the McDougall program and where they treat patients with all sorts of um, conditions. He also had a TV show for over 30 years that was very well known, very respected. He also had a radio program for many years and he is the author together with his wonderful wife, Mary, of 10 best-selling books. Actually, I think maybe more like 11. I'm not sure. I have to check that. He also has the best website in the industry, like uh, Dr. Hans Deal put it um, in October. He, he, the website is the, um, he's the, the Google man of health. I thought that was very appropriate. He has also been involved in legislative action in Hawaii and in California. And in October of this year, he was the recipient of the very prestigious award of the ACLM Lifetime Achievement Award. And all of you can watch that on his website. The uh, ceremony is there posted and it's worth uh, watching for sure. There's so much more I could say about Dr. McDougall. We would have the entire webinar for that, but I know that you are all anxious to hear him and not me. So I would like to welcome now Dr. McDougall and thank you for being with us. How are you doing? Oh, good, Gustavo. And I, I want the audience to know that Gustavo and I go far more than this uh, webinar we're doing. We go back a long ways as good friends. Uh, what I want to ask you as a good friend, Gustavo, will you be part of the band that plays on the deck when the Titanic sinks? <laughs> Will you play music for us while the Titanic? Oh, that would be the best way to go. Well, okay. I, I, I need something to make me happy. Okay, I promise then that I'm going to be there for you. You'll be there. You'll be there playing your piano as the Titanic sinks. I will. And now you're going to have to tell us what well, you mean by well, the Titanic. Okay, sinks. Let, me, let me explain to you. Uh, you know, I'm a medical doctor, uh, board certified internist. Uh, half of the program was developed with my wife Mary. I have seven grandchildren. Now, that's the most important thing in my life these days. I'm 72 years old, uh, fully active, fully functional, having a great time. I spent from 1977 until, well, 2017. So that's, man, you do the math. That's a long time, probably 40 years. Taking care of patients, I've taken care of almost 12,000 people, uh, 6,000 in a living situation where I basically locked them up. And uh, when I started this, I was considered, well, to be kind way ahead of my time. To be less kind, I was considered a quack because I said back there 40 years ago to my chief of medicine and all those that would listen to me that a diet was important when it comes to human health. That surprised my colleagues. They thought diet had nothing to do with disease. Well, I told them not only did it have something to do with human health, it caused over 80% of our chronic illnesses. And if you correct the problem, which is the food, you will cure a good share of these people. Let's just say they'll be all of them will be dramatically benefit, maybe 
and go back to a full functioning life without medication. In fact, our published results show that we get nearly 90% of people to reduce or stop their medications in about seven days. In fact, we do it in about three days. All right, I spent 40 years doing that and I've taught thousands of doctors how to practice this way. You know, may, maybe I was ahead of my time back then, but not anymore. There are at least 4,000 doctors that I know about who know the truth as I do, that people are second by the Western diet, which you folks eat with enthusiasm, I'm sure many of you do. And when you correct that, you go from an animal product centered diet, which is meat, milk, cheese, fish, fish, chicken. Uh, you go from a meat center diet, what's for dinner, grandma? Oh, we're having pork chops. To a starch center diet, which is the traditional diet of human beings. So when you ask grandma what you're having for dinner, she says spaghetti. We're having uh, mashed potatoes uh, along with all the trimmings. Yeah, starch is the true human diet. We are starch vegetarians, starch wars, starch eaters, starches are corn, rice, potatoes, beans, peas, and lentils. They're vegetable parts that, that uh, concentrate a large amount of carbohydrate, sugar, calories. They're the food of human beings. 99.9999% of the people who ever walked this earth obtained the bulk of their calories from starch. And people are sickened because they eat the Western diet, which is the wrong food for people. You wouldn't even feed it to your pets. It's so sickening. Anyway, I spent 40 years uh, not only teaching this, but writing books about it and doing TV and radio shows, as uh, Dr. Telosis told you. And uh, I'm over that. As I say, I've uh, uh, taught what I know. Uh, certainly, I learned it from others. I wasn't original. But uh, now I'm on to a different focus in my life. And part of it has to do, well, I started this in 2006. I wrote my first article about um, Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth. We're eating the planet to death, I went on. Al Gore, although he did, this wonderful documentary made all of us aware, including me. He added greatly to my knowledge base. Al Gore wrote, uh, a book and did a documentary, did lectures all over the world called An Inconvenient Truth. But as a black Angus farmer and as a very overweight man himself at that time, before he became vegan, which he did, uh, Al Gore wouldn't talk about the food issues. Yeah. Wouldn't talk about the food issues. Uh, during the uh, Republican U.S. Uh, uh, conventions of 2004, 2008, climate change wasn't even mentioned. The uh, uh, conventions of 2012, they talked about climate change, but they didn't talk anything about food. And 216, likewise. Now, this, this presidential election, we have Democratic candidates addressing climate change a little more enthusiastically, but not about the food, which we're going to get to. It's important, first of all, you know nobody will address it. Cory Booker, who is a vegan, says, no, the population of the U.S. and Argentina and et cetera should not become vegan. That means no animal products in the diet. And in my understanding, it means a diet based on starch, like rice, corn, potatoes, sweet peas, sweet potatoes, et cetera. That's why 99.99% of people that ever walked this earth ate. This, this, this Western diet is an aberration of the last 50 to 100 years, except for kings and queens and aristocrats of the past. They've been eating for thousands of years. But in mass, it's only been something we've been doing for the last, well, I'd say 35 years around the world. Since we got CNN News, we advertised Taco Bell, and McDonald's, etc. Anyway, uh, even Greta Thunberg, you know, the young teenager who has stimulated so much interest in the environment, she rarely talks about food. Now, ah, uh, and I, I know why, because people are afraid to talk about food. Uh, but there are, um, there are people out there like myself who realize that food is the most important card we have to play. Yes, we all have to drive electric cars. Yes, we all have to have uh, solar power, and solar transfer, efficient transportation, and so on. No question about it. But those take decades, decades. We could be extinct as a planet before we even get that technology to half the people. Food. A food is a card that you can play today. I played it. I played it 40 years ago. Gustavo played it about six, eight years ago. 
Food is a card you can play right now. You don't have to ask your politicians. You don't have to ask your mother, your father, your kids. You can play the food card right now. And food is so important when it comes to our future. Yes. Uh, I started realizing this when the, uh, uh, the World Bank funded the uh, United Nations uh, to, uh, 407 page report called Livestock's Long Shadow in 2006. The year 2006, that's what, 14 years ago. Livestock's Long Shadow, this 407 page report, which you ought to at least glance at, said that 18% uh, of the greenhouse gases are produced by the livestock industry compared to 14% being produced by all transportation combined. That means all planes, buses, trains, et cetera. So that kind of got people interested, but the calculations done by the investigators of Livestock's Long Shadow, which you can look up on the internet and read, uh, <clears throat> They left a lot of things out, you know, like the methane burp, and they didn't consider other aspects of what livestock consumption uh, results in. So we have the World Watch Institute, and consulting on that World Watch Institute was a guy named Robert Goodland. And if you look at my past videos on the website, drmcdougall.com, you look under videos, it would be under experts, I guess. Robert Goodland, I had him as a guest. He was the uh, environmental advisor for the World Food Bank for 23 years. And he came to our center in Santa Rosa, California. We still run a 10-day living program, but we'll be happy to take care of you. So he came uh, from a long distance and he told us uh, some very amazing things. He told us we we're in big trouble and that we had one card that we really needed to play and that was the food card. Now, how important is the food card? Well, there have been three major studies that I've cited. You can, you can look at these studies if you want. I put up uh, part of the lecture on climate change. It's under my award ceremony, which is where I was honored in October, as uh, Dr. Tolosa told you. I was honored uh, uh, for my lifetime achievement. Well, you know, rather than an honor, I would have appreciated action from the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. But anyway, uh, what I do is I offer you there three major reviews that show that just by changing diet, from a healthier version of the Western diet, that's where you start is one end, to a vegan diet, and they really mean a start center diet like I teach. No animal foods, no livestock, no fishies, no milk secretions, no. Uh, the potential is that overnight, potential overnight, we could be doing reduce just from the livestock control. We could reduce greenhouse gas production from agriculture by as high as 70 to 80 percent. Well, maybe I've got the math wrong, but you can correct me. Yeah, just write me at Dr. McDougall at drmcdougall.com. And if I do the math, and let's just say over half the greenhouse gases come from the livestock industry. That's what the World Watch Institute says. That's what Robert Goodman and his associates say. But they say, you know, this is a conservative estimate. It could be higher. Let's just take 50%. Say we can get an 80% reduction. Say 70% reduction. All right, 50% times 70%. What does that result in? A 35% reduction overall greenhouse gases? You could do that today. You could begin it as a person, as one of the 7 billion people on this planet. You could change. You've got to have a starch based diet. You cannot have a vegetarian or vegan diet. It must not be based around sprouts and kale and lettuce and so on. You'll starve to death must be based around rice like the Asians have consumed. You know, before 1980, before 1980, 90% of the diet from Asia came from white rice, 90%. Now, of course, the Asians, Chinese, Vietnam, with wealthy Vietnamese, uh, they ride around in first class seats on airplanes and they can hardly fit. Yes, they can hardly fit anymore. They look like Americans. 35 years, wow, wow, wow. Okay, uh, so I will spend, I told you I'm 72 years old, maybe I'll get another 10 years of good function left, if I'm lucky. I'm doing pretty good now, and uh, I'm going to spend that time trying to give my grandchildren a future. Right now they have no future. But I believe, and I have to get up every day believing it, that if we all work together, and we're going to be working together pretty soon, 
because nature doesn't care about the dairy industry or the medical profession or your politics in your country. No, nature doesn't care. She is moving right along with making corrections long overdue. And part of that correction is to eliminate some troublesome species like Homo sapiens. Uh, face it, you don't believe me now? I'm going to wait for the next weather challenge. As Stavo told you, you know, I've earned the right to uh, talk to you about an environmental catastrophe. We were one of 5,000 homes that got out, burnt out in the wildfires on October 9th, 2017 in Santa Rosa, California. So materially, I lost everything that day, but I gained a tremendous amount of insight. This is real, folks. And you have, don't have time to, to figure out how to get out of the solution. You're part of the solution right now. You just don't know it. Or you're part of the problem. Anyway, Gustavo, that's my introduction. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Well, Dr. Maduro, that was pretty much all that I wanted you to hear from you. So I well, believe you know, like to talk to your group. That, that, oh. you know, that we, there's so many talented people in your audience. I'm sure there are, just like in my audiences. And, you know, you're, you're a lawyer or you're a teacher or you're a minister or you're a, a repairman or whatever you do, a piano player, even if you're as lowly as a piano player. <laughs> you know, you've got something you can do to make this a better place and make the world survive. You've got to get your talents. I'm a doctor. I, you know, I do what I do. But you've got talent, too. Well, that's that's what I was going to ask you to comment, Dr. McGrew. Like, what what would what do you think that every one of us could do to put a little green there? For well, you know, I think the major impact you can make at no cost and no suffering. In fact, you end up getting rid of your obesity and your constipation, et cetera, and everything in between. Is you can switch to a starch-based diet, like I've eaten for over. I've eaten since 1977, you know, almost exclusively. These days, over say the last 15 years, I would have to say you could call me a very, very strict vegan. But that's because I really, really did lose all interest in the uh, the, the uh, salted and spiced, covered up dead animal muscles. But hey, if you want to share guilt, I'll share guilt with you. I'll tell you, I was just terrible when I was younger. I thought it was my uh, my birthright to take whatever I wanted from planet Earth, kill whatever I wanted, to eat whatever I wanted. So, you know, I know I've been there. I almost died myself when I was 18 years old with a massive stroke. But, you know, I mean, I could tell you those stories all day long. Uh, anyway, I, I would uh, I would tell you, first of all, uh, first of all, you um, change your own personal diet. Second of all, whatever talent you have, you tell everybody you know that we are in a climate emergency and we must act now and teach them the dietary component and tell them about, you know, the other things they already know about, about solar roofs and, you know, transportation. Fine. It's just like I told the people at the American College of Lifestyle Medicine meeting in October in Orlando, Florida, where they gave me this great honor in front of 500 people that are, you know, it's standing room only. I said, look, you guys, you guys with the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, most of them are dietitians and doctors and so on. I said, you can't build a Tesla. You don't know how to build electric cars. You don't know how to install rooftop uh, solar panels. What you know about is food. And you need to make this the priority for the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. And you know what? They were offended. I'm sure they were. I mean, they, on, on one side, they were. They told, came up. A couple of people told me how grateful they were that somebody talked about climate change during this meeting. People are afraid to talk about it. They don't want to talk about the food climate change. They don't even want to talk about climate change. People want to look at, look at reality. Why, as I said, Mother Nature doesn't give a darn where you look because she's just moving right on ahead. Anyway, uh, my response to the American College of Lifestyle Medicine was, hey, if you're not going to deal with the food, who is? Dietitians certainly aren't. They're bought by the dairy and meat industry. Anyway, we could go on and on. Yeah, right. Well, I was going to ask you, Dr. McGrew, how uh, the, your your talk, your presentation was received uh, afterwards. 
because well, of course the video shows you speaking, but it doesn't show it afterward. What, what, well, what they, they, they gave me two standing ovations, or maybe uh -huh. three. Uh -huh. So I, I know I had the audience see. That, yeah. Yes, you did. Yes. And, uh, but you know, I, I have only, I've not gotten a single email afterwards. I mean, there are 500 people that listen to my talk. I, went, I gave another talk on climate change. I don't think we put it on the website yet. To a group of about 300 people after that. An even more complete talk, and nobody's responded. Nobody's written me. Uh, you know, I haven't had the American College of Life Style Medicine come out and say that they're going to they're going to lead uh, this part of the of the battle. I mean, whew, a doctor came up to me after the American College of Life Style Medicine uh, talk I gave. He says to me, he says, uh, you know, the American College of Life Style Medicine trains physicians, gives them board certification, etc., just like the American College of Surgeons, etc. So, uh, you know, I asked him, what, what have you guys accomplished since I helped you found this organization back in 2004, which I did, Mary and I helped. What have you accomplished? Well, we gained 3,500 members. But what have you really accomplished? You know, uh, you know, we have a whole world to save. I mean, good grief, you guys could, gals could stand up and take, take a stand. Well, what would you risk? When everything's at stake, what do you risk? Anyway, a doctor came up to me and says, you know, it doesn't make any sense for me to be a well-trained doctor on a dead planet. So at least one person understood what I was saying. Right. Yeah. What is it? What would be the use? Yeah, nothing, I said, well, nothing matters. Think point. about it, ladies and gentlemen. If you're listening to me, think about it. Whatever you're doing, what is the use? I mean, what's the meaning, the purpose? What when we're talking about irreversible climate change is within 10 to 12 years, according to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which they announced in September of this year. we got 10 to 12 years left, they said. Other people say 10 to 12 months. And the type of weather you're having wherever you are in the world, I don't care where you are. I mean, I'm in Portland, Oregon. I'll tell you, it's sunny as can be out there, and all the people in Portland are saying what wonderful weather it is. It hasn't hardly rained at all this year. Well, excuse me, that's all relative. Portland, Oregon used to be known as the soggy, cloudiest place in the United States. Not anymore, folks. So it was the wildfires in California that sent me to Portland, Oregon, and it's going to be wildfires up here pretty soon. And if the wildfires haven't reached you yet, boy, oh boy, I tell you, it's so sad to see the koala bears. In Australia, isn't it terrible? I mean, I, you know, as I'm watching the newscasts these days, you know, Australia is on fire. I mean, the whole darn country is on fire. And uh, I remember when we were there, I, one of the great gifts I gave my father is he always wanted to go to Australia and New Zealand. And I collected enough miles uh, from all my traveling, selling books when I was a young man that I was able to take him to Australia. And we spent three weeks in Australia and New Zealand together. And one of the high points that it was illegal to do, I have to tell you, was he got to hold a koala bear. And Mary and I went to Australia a few years back, maybe 10, 15. Uh, we went on the Great Coral Reef and did some scuba diving, and the reefs were almost dead by then. But they're, I hear they're completely dead now. Uh, anyway, she got to hold a koala bear. So, you know, I mean, hey, folks, watch TV. Uh, if this, if the, the cute face of a koala bear doesn't get you to want to eat potatoes and rice and corn, and give up your dead cows and pigs and chickens. I don't know what will. Think about it. You know, you have some personal choices to make, and don't let those low carvers, those Atkins followers, those liars, cheaters, and polluters fool you. You know what I'm talking about. Exactly. And Dr. McDougall, a lot of people are asking questions here, but I, I just want to mention that you and I have done a, more than 200 webinars together, and I think. They're all on my website. Yeah. I think you have covered every single topic that I see here uh, as questions. And so I just want to encourage people, please go to the website and go to the education tab and, and see what you're interested in. Uh, you will get a much more complete answer than in two in a minute here. Uh, but I'm just going to look here and see if there's right. any. Let me, let me expand on that a little bit because it may help some people. Uh, Mary and I basically give everything away free. Uh, you go to the website, drmcdougall.com, spelled D-R-M-C-D-O-U-G-A-L-L.com. And people will write me, they'll say, where's the gimmick? You know, everything's free. I mean, no, you can't come to our clinic, uh, be locked up for 10 days, and 
have our doctors take care of you for free. That won't happen. But, you know, if you have the interest in doing it yourself, there's a, a program there. There's probably 600, 600 recipes there. There's full instructions. There's full topic discussions. I mean, nothing's hidden. It's all free at drmcdougal.com. So uh, I would use the search engine. Uh, there are doctors all over the country when I give lectures, conferences. They tell me, look, when I have a problem, the first place I go, we're talking about physicians. The first place I go is I go to your website and see what you have to say about it. And then I read the rest of the literature. And then it makes sense. You might try that on things like type 2 diabetes. Uh, there's a guy named John Lewis. He's a, a, mm -hmm. a representative uh, from Georgia. who just came down with terminal pancreatic cancer. John Lewis. Yeah. Well, I wrote an article in November of 2011 about Steve Jobs. And why did Steve Jobs die and his pancreatic cancer? Hey, you know, hopefully we put that out as a mailing within the next week or so. Uh, so people can be up to date about this disease, pancreatic cancer. I mean, it, so if you want to hear what I had to say about it, well, I wrote about nine years ago when Steve Jobs died. Even though he had more money and more genius than probably anybody that's ever walked this earth. Steve Jobs died at the hands of his doctors. And they actually hurt him terribly. They should be ashamed of themselves. Anyway, you read the article, you judge for yourself. Yes. Uh, November yes. 2011 in my newspapers. Why did Steve Jobs die? John Lewis. But, you know, that's the thing is I had the, uh, the foresight and, I don't know, the curiosity to explore all kinds of subjects. Before I stopped writing newsletters, and you're right, Gustavo, I, I just, plain simple, ran out of topics. I'd written about everything. And besides that, the whole medicine thing, I've already turned over to my colleagues, my son, doctors who work for me. You know, there's 3,500 doctors that uh, uh, belong to the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. There are probably I don't know, 100,000 million doctors who are vegans, gave up all animal products for their personal health or maybe the environment. So uh, it's time for me to move along. And yeah. one of the topics that nobody's going to talk about is the food. Now, remember, I told you over half of the greenhouse gases are produced by the livestock industry. And by switching to a vegan diet, that means no livestock. You give up the dead animals, the dead muscles, you need to stop eating dead spleens, dead testicles, dead vaginas, dead cut ears. Stop it. <laughs> I mean, it's disgusting in the first place. And it's cruel when they say 80 billion animals a year are killed. Oh, man, I'll tell you. What a sick place. I mean, when you stop and look at it from our point of view, I mean, the insanity is overwhelming. But I know that the mo many, if not most of you, are still from the point of view that I used to be. And you can't see anything. You know, when I sit down to a plate of pork chops or an you know, inch and a half inch steak and three or four eggs in the morning for breakfast, I, I, I was unconscious. I wasn't seeing and we yes. open eyes, and I, I hope that we at least open some eyes here in this short. I think that the insanity you mentioned, Dr. McDougall, is around us so much because then we have so many people around us saying, "But it's okay to eat meat." All our ancestors, everybody ate meat, and yeah, um, well. but it, it's a comparison that doesn't. He can't compare those times to these times, and um, we've talked about that as well. But yeah, yeah, uh, you know. You know I, Okay, I'll tell you what, you can eat all the meat you want, boiled or raw. Oh, we'll you can eat boiled. That go down. boiled chicken, boiled cow, boiled pig. You can eat, you know you don't get any salt. No, you don't get any steak sauce. No, you get it boiled. I want you to have the full flavor like my cat Einstein used to enjoy. Then you can eat, yeah. You can't eat it without the salt and the sauce that's sprinkled over the top to disguise the bland, disgusting right. taste and sights. Yeah, you're willing to yeah. die for that? For yellow and brown food that's disgusting and distasteful? Really? Think about it. You're blind. You're blind if you don't see this. And you know what? It's very interesting uh, watching the politics of these days. Why did it take me 72 years to have my eyes open about politics? Or, or any of the issues. What were we watching last night? Uh, not important, but uh, one of the issues is that in any of these discussions, whether it be gun restrictions or, you know, drug issues or whatever it is, 
whatever it is, uh, the opposing side of an argument does not have to convince you that they're right and you're wrong. Opposing side, all they have to do is give you a wiggle room, a way out. So you say, oh, you know, there's a lot of argument about whether or not eating animal foods uh, cause me to be sick and destroy the planet. Uh, Joe Blow over here who works for, owns two cow farms, he says it's okay. I think I'll believe him. You know, they just have to give you an excuse, uh, some way to get out of the, uh, the fact that you have to make a difference to make a difference. Yeah. But, you know, that's the way, that's the way PR works in every field. You don't have to convince the opponent he's wrong. You just give those who are watching some room to wiggle out of your truthfulness. Yeah. Exactly. Dr. McDowell, where could people find um, some kind of uh, evidence or studies that show that um, someone is saying here that greenhouse gases, 51% are caused by livestock agriculture. Right. Do we have any, can we, or can I email people this? Sure. No, I just go to World Watch Institute, or look at my website and look at the Robert Goodland video, or uh, let's see, have I written about half the greenhouse gas? I don't think I've written, in my books I've written about the World Watch Institute's findings, but uh, yeah, just look up World Watch Institute on the uh, internet, and uh, you'll find, well, Robert Goodland has died. Uh, he died shortly after he left our weekend. But uh, his lecture's alive and well. I'll tell you, he's one of the most real persons you've ever heard, even though he's speaking from beyond still. You know, we had the luxury of getting his lecture yeah, done. Exactly. Uh, World Watch Institute. There, there you'll okay. find the 51%. They say 51%. And again, or there's another, yeah. another a new book out uh, by uh, Jonathan Fiore, Fiore, something like that. It's called We Are the Weather. We Are yeah. the Weather. And it, it's a, it just came out, brand new book. Uh, this guy, he is, he, again, disgusts me reading the book in the sense that the author says that he's not able to give up dairy and eggs, and he has to admit to sneaking away for an occasional burger. Yet he reviews the evidence that I just talked to you about. That's how self-centered people can be. Anyway, we are the weather, it's called. It's, it's worth a read. And okay. he, argues, he argues that uh, if you compare the data and the analysis done by the UN versus uh, done by Goodland and his partners at uh, World Watch Institute, uh, with uh, very 18% as opposed to 51% or greater greenhouse gases, he argues that, that World Watch Institute is more correct. And I think they are more correct. I, I you know, believe me, we have, if we are ever able to face this fact that uh, the human being, the homo sapien, is a permanently a starchitarian, and that we're doing something very aberrant, which is reflecting the fact that almost everybody in Western society is sick, and we've destroyed the planet. You know, until people become aware of that and they are willing to change, we're not going to change on the right side of history. Uh -huh. We're going to change on the wrong side of history. We're going to change. You are you are going to change to a vegan diet. I guarantee it. Probably within the next ten to twenty years. Uh huh. Either either by choice or by circumstance. By circumstance, yeah. Because, because the way I see the world going, you're not going to be uh, able to. You'll be lucky if you have enough rice to eat. Uh huh. Exactly. Doctor McDonald, will we? Pessimism, and I want you to just look outside. And tell me whether I'm wrong. Uh huh. What the weather is doing outside. Look at the ice caps. Look at what's going on. I know. Because it's almost a daily not, thing. You're not, you're blind. You, maybe you want to be blind. I've thought about that often, uh, Gustavo. Maybe I'd just like to, you know, sit down and put a cartoon on or something and let the, let the world go by. Why should I care? I'll probably be dead by the time the worst things happen. You know, it's 72. But I have seven grandchildren. Yeah. I've had a great life and they deserve something better than what we have offered them. And Greta Thunberg put it really well in front of the United Nations Climate Change Conference. You guys just want the money. And be more profitable the next year. That's all you care about. Well, you know, maybe the children will save us. <laughs> I hope so. Maybe. Yeah, you ask what you can do in addition to change it to a vegan diet, go out in the streets. 
when we were in Vietnam, when I was drafted back in my 20s, we were out in the streets bearing our draft cards. Hey, folks, this climate problem is far more serious than me going to Vietnam, which I didn't get to go, but I was close. Anyway. No, come on, Gustav. There must be some lighthearted questions here. Um, Dr. Matula, do, do we expect, will we expect to see you giving lectures, whether it's online or in person somewhere else in the world? I, I, I've got, uh, there's an organization I've just joined. Uh, it's called uh, Climate Healers. And uh, one of the uh, co-producers of uh, Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth will be one of the keynote speakers. I'll be another of the keynote speakers. It's going to be... I don't know, around April 25th of 2020 in Portland. And I'll be speaking there. And I, you know, I've got probably, in addition to going to my clinic every month, which is where I see the patients, and have a chance, Mary and I, to talk to them and help them with any questions they have. In addition to that kind of speaking at my own clinic in Santa Rosa, California, I, uh, I've accepted some invitations. I certainly love to do internet things because hey, it's so carbon friendly. You know, getting on an airplane is not. And I've just started to realize that even though I used to have, I used to have, be, have premier status in three airlines. So again, I am, I am a, you know, I'm a fish killer in the past. I'm a cow killer. I'm a planet killer. I've been, you know, but I lived under ignorance. I really, really just didn't know. I know now. Yeah. And those who are aware have an obligation to share. So uh, in answer to your question, Gustavo, I, I would do an internet interview with anybody who's willing to listen. And uh, any group that's interested, uh, just get in contact with me at uh, drmcdougall.com. We have a website email address there. And uh, as far as live presentations go, if they're influential enough to get on an airplane, I'll do it. Otherwise, hey, we got we all have to learn about our travel. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Uh, Doctor McDougall, you're not seeing a lot of patients nowadays, but you do see some in the ten day program, correct? Well, I, I actually I'm available to all of our patients. We have over six thousand patients, and anybody who goes to the program, Mary and I are available to them. I used to take care of every patient myself, as you know, when you came to the clinic. I personally took care of you. Uh, now I have other physicians who work for me, primarily Dr. Anthony Lim, who's a board certified family practitioner, who's been a great addition to the program. And I trained him for two and a half years, side by side. I trained him how to practice this way. So he does a wonderful job, and we have uh, six other physicians who have been trained by me, who occasionally work in the program when we do big programs. Like we take care of, uh, the employees of Whole Foods Market. And we take care of the employees of a telecommunication company called CenturyLink. And Forbes magazine actually wrote an article about our CenturyLink experience. And CenturyLink reported that we've reduced their healthcare costs by 34% by them going through our program. 34% reduction in those who participate in our program. That's a huge telecommunication company. You can see the money from doing the right things for their patients. And I wish other companies could too, because we really, really love taking care of uh, employees of companies because you know, they've got that profit margin as a motivation for keeping their jobs and succeeding. And there's nothing like cutting out a few bypass surgery, a few breast amputations, or a few prostate removals to uh, save a few million bucks here and there. And companies have discovered this. And they've also discovered their employees don't want to be sick. And they're more efficient employees if they're healthy. And certainly uh, their personal appearance affects all of their business among their fellow employees and their customers. So it's been a big deal. We've been, we took care of, uh, uh, of many other people and companies over the years. Thank you, Dr. McDougall. I think that we, I know you have to go in five minutes, so we have uh, pretty much run out of time. Maybe well, we will do another webinar in the future. But well, let's let's take good advantage of that five minutes because I really, unfortunately, did a bit of a monologue here. Yes, yes. 
All right. Very good. Well, I, again, appreciate your time. Everybody here appreciates it very much. And um, we wish you a very happy 2020. Well, I'm, glad, I'm glad your life has turned around too, Gustavo. And, Mine has turned around, yes. Yeah, but And I'm also glad you kept your enthusiasm uh, for helping others and helping the planet. And also, you should show your before pictures because you're I looking, you're looking yeah. great. I should. Thank you. Thank you. I'm working on I'm passing this information to the Spanish-speaking community. And so All I right. want to tell people about this because this is one of my passions. And um, I've been working on with another doctor that speaks Spanish on a website and also webinars. So if you know anybody who speaks Spanish, send them uh, yeah. my way. <laughs> Well, we across, you know, people want to contribute. Uh, we have a discussion board. Yes, exactly. well, we're always in. We also have a five hundred one c three foundation, which we we're collecting money for. Right. We research. We've done some, some very good research and published it in the major medical journals, or let's just say respected medical journals. Exactly. The major medical journals are run by the drug companies, <laughs> so we don't get to publish them that. Right. And that's a good general statement, with few exceptions. Exactly, exactly. Well, thank you again. And, All right. Uh, well, well, good life to you. And uh, and anytime you'd like to talk, I'd love to talk to you. All right. And thank you, everybody, for being here. I will email the replay in less than 24 hours. All right. Good enough. And, uh, okay. <laughs> next time, and next time, if you want me to talk about uh, my earlier life and just talk about medicine, we can. But I'll tell you, Gustavo, it just uh, weighs heavily on me. Yes. Well, that would be a good webinar to talk about that because the experience that you had before is very valuable. Well, I've written 13 national best-selling books along with Mary. So it's all there. We have probably 50, 60 webinars that we personally have done. Uh, lectures we've done high quality. And we've got the 250 webinars you and I have done together. And, um, you know, we have Hundreds of articles that I've written and Mary's written. And yeah, yeah. They're up, there, they're up there. They're available. And you'll see that somebody said to me, you know, why is it you just now get interested in climate change, John? Oh, well, excuse me. I've been interested for almost 20 years. Yes, yes. Right. yes. Well, good enough. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, folks. Bye, everybody. And thank you, Dr. McDougall.